Hey everyone, Pastor Kerry here. Most of you are probably watching this sometime around the 4th of July weekend, so I won't keep you long. But since a lot of the public festivities have been canceled, I thought I'd give you a glimpse of something I recorded last year at this time when I was in our nation's capital watching what may have been one of the biggest fireworks displays in history. And from the vantage point of looking straight down the reflecting pool and watching the fireworks burst behind the Lincoln Memorial, it certainly was a spectacular setting for an Independence Day celebration. But when we see something like this and we hear the oohs and ahs from the crowd all around, do we remember what it all represents? And I'm not talking about the holiday, but the history. The use of fireworks were originally meant to resemble various kinds of battle artillery, the rocket's red glare and bombs bursting in air is more than just the familiar refrain of our national anthem. It's the description of a raging battle, an intense war, and all that goes with that, the destruction and devastation, and even death. Now, I don't say that to throw a wet blanket over these kind of festivities because those who fought and gave their lives for our freedom would want us to celebrate it to the fullest. Yet as we celebrate, I hope we remember the sacrifice that makes that celebration possible. But more than that, I want to remind all of us of another sacrifice, an even greater one that can easily be forgotten or at the least pushed to the back of our minds amongst a lot of symbolism. And the images are evident everywhere we go, but particularly in churches. And it's a symbol that most of us watching today can identify with. It's what you see behind me right now, the cross. This symbol of the cross has been used in all kinds of ways, good and bad, throughout history, and it's displayed in multiple forms in countless places throughout the world. Many people even display it on their bodies in the forms of jewelry or tattoos, but the original cross that most of that is intended to represent was certainly not an icon or a piece of art. It was a brutal and humiliating form of execution reserved for the foulest criminals and it's where the most innocent person who ever lived paid a debt he didn't owe for a price we couldn't pay. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. The tree meaning a rugged wooden cross, the kind on which God's Son and our Savior gave his life to pay the penalty for our sin against God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8 says, Being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. You know, before Christ, it would have been unthinkable for anyone to take comfort in the thought of a cross, let alone identify with it. But because of Jesus' death on the cross, we can experience the ultimate freedom of a personal relationship with God. And that turns something very frightful and ugly into a symbol of faith and peace and comfort for those who accept Jesus' sacrifice and entrust their lives to him. So God doesn't expect us to grieve over the cross because Jesus' death made a way for us to have eternal life. But neither does God expect us to make the cross an icon. It's so commonplace that we forget the sacrifice it represents. Instead, Jesus wants us to celebrate the freedom he purchased for us on that cross and to never be ashamed to identify with his sacrifice as we surrender our lives to God and follow his path for our lives. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26, Jesus talks about if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And that means boldly identifying with Jesus and being willing to endure the hardship and rejection that often goes along with following him in a world that's going hard and fast in the other direction. But while the way of the cross isn't easy, it's a road Jesus has walked before and walks beside us now. And in the end, it leads to eternal life. And that certainly is something to celebrate.